Hello, hello, welcome to Quackalope, and today we're bringing you some of the very first Kingdom Death gameplay that I've had on my channel. Uh, don't worry, more is coming. The funny thing about this gameplay is we are battling the Storm Knight, which if anyone knows Kingdom Death isn't actually an experience you can have based off the core rule set of Kingdom Death. I'm here with Tommy. You're part of the, uh, sort of one of the leaders of the fan content creation kind of Kingdom Death community. We just had a long discussion about modding for Kingdom Death, yep. creating new story events, uh, expanding upon the world, the lore, mm -hmm. the mechanics, experimenting with the framework that the box gives you. And now we're about to swing into a showdown with the Storm Knight. Now, before I let you talk, I want to go ahead and, and let people know a few things. First off, we have custom-made character sheets uh, with core gear that is designed around kind of a mid-game entry point. Each one of those, you can actually get these. There's PDFs available. We have characters that have a little bit of personality, their armor, their gear slots, their insanity already set in stone. Uh, we have a custom AI deck, custom hit location deck, custom strange resources, resources, gear cards, terrain cards. Uh, I'm trying to think of what other things I've missed. Weapons, but yeah. Everything. We are playing with a large variety of fan-created content. Play-tested, designed, sourced, printed by the Kingdom Death community. Yep. You and the 30-plus people behind you. Yep. So, uh, for any of you that are just interested in Kingdom Death, this will not be a direct reflection on what the core game holds, but I think it'll be an accurate reflection on the experience, why people love this game, what you can get out of a, a core version of this game. Along with that, we're just doing the showdown. Right? Yep. So there are two other parts of Kingdom Death that exist. There is the settlement phase where you uh, gather resources, build, develop, create this tribe of people you're with. And there is the hunt phase, which you actually have some modded content for as well, which is the storytelling part of the journey. Which, this, which this would not include because it's a nemesis fight anyway. Exactly. So we're just doing the, uh, the showdown. That's correct. The fight. Uh, go ahead and tell me what we're going to experience. What's going on here? And talk a little bit about your community. I think you just, you have a Patreon up and running yep. where people can get access to all of this fan-created content. Yep, so all of this and then more that I think... A that, ton more. Yep, a yeah. ton more that, that uh, Jesse just mentioned is uh, www.patreon.com backslash ccgt. There'll be a link down below, like yep. always. Just go click on that. Yep. Um, for here, the kind of a couple things here. The characters, we followed the... Uh, I think uh, in August during the Gen Con, uh, Adam introduced the vignette White Lion and also yep. in introduced vignettes inside of it. Um, it's kind of the, one of the things that like my team kind of took to heart because it allowed by making these vignettes uh, ability to kind of like immediately test. So if you guys want to test any of our content, we're trying to make sure that vignettes come out with those cards. And you've got that vignettes content. that are accurate to the, the stage where you'd be experiencing yeah, those Yeah, the creatures. Lantern Year. The and along with that, one thing I have to point out that people will be able to notice in some of the B-roll and stuff, you also have uh, gear card sized indicators for Tinker, Stalwart, Masteries, different sort of disorders, traits, all the little modifiers that are so hard to keep track of while you play Core yep. Kingdom Death. You got all those printable files. They're not cheap. I mean, it takes, <laughs> not, not to buy, just to print physically. Everything's given out for yep, free to exactly. the community. This is all time and effort is spent developing this for you personally and yep. then everyone else. Uh, but but I kind of hate you because <laughs> as I was reading through and, and looking at these and figuring out how my gear sheet was going to break down, I automatically want to play with little tiny disorder reference cards. Yeah, I play actually at home with actually three gear grids, two to three gear grids per person. Yeah. Which is, gets a little ridiculous, but it keeps everything, as you mentioned, in front of you. It lets you follow it. Yep, which means you know? you're not like, oh, I missed that one rule. Yep. Oh, I forgot about that thing. And being in front of you just allows you yep. to remember it always. So we're gonna swing into the gameplay really yep. quick. Uh, the main thing that we wanna set up is going to be an overview of what this experience is, like what people will see over the course of this gameplay, what you guys have developed or changed. And then I'm gonna have you read that flavor text and we're gonna dive right into it. The two things that I want to point out before we swing heavily into this gameplay. First off, if you're joining us, this is some of the first Kingdom Death gameplay we're actually bringing to the channel. I have plans for a whole lot more down the road. You've indicated that you're willing to come up and hang out and yep. do some more fan-created content. Along with that, I want to dive into People the Stars, People the Lantern, just all those different journeys that Kingdom Death has. The reality is, this will be the most highly edited uh, and an overly produced Kingdom Death video on the market by the time it drops. That's what we do here on the channel. That's what Quackalope is known for. That is not easy to do, right? It yep. takes time. You, you've been sitting by for like 45 minutes while I've just filmed B-roll of all of this. Yep. 
And so if you like this content, I, I really do need you guys to do a few things for me. You know, I need you to subscribe. Um, having you as part of the community here opens doors for me to be able to produce more content. We work with various other publishers. Kingdom Death is sort of closed door. So like, they're never gonna pay for me to produce this. They just won't. So we have to grow our channel in a way that allows us to get the funding to produce this type of content that's dear to our heart. Along with that, if you're already a subscriber, comment down below on what you'd like to see. Just vocalize your support. Let us know your thoughts on this campaign or the showdown. Uh, and let us know what sort of content you'd like to see coming down the road. And finally, we're a small channel. We've been around for about a year and a month or two at this point. I'd really appreciate it if you just share us out, tweet us out, share us on what other platform you, you kind of spend the most of your time on. You know, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. Uh, just kind of push the name Quackalope. We're small enough that the 20 or 30 of you that will take the time to do these things really do make a massive impact on our community, on what we're able to do kind of over the next few months. Um, it can be annoying for a sales pitch like this and about midway through, if you haven't subscribed, I'll tell you to like leave because I don't care at that point. Uh, but to begin with, I kind of got to throw it out there in the front. The second thing I want to say is a, a real big thank you to the Cardboard Wizard. Uh, who sent me this beautiful token tray here, um, along with some other inserts, uh, not associated with you at all. Nope. Um, but I am- but Very am, useful. I'm really grateful for a way to organize all of my tokens. So if you're interested in Kingdom Death, if you already have a core box, if you're trying to figure out how to inter- if you're trying to figure out how to organize some elements of it, uh, there'll be a link down in the comment section below to their Etsy shop where you can check out some of their, uh, their really nice products. Awesome. With that being said, Talk to us about the Storm Knight. What's going on? So, oh, oh, in a second, if I have seen my phone, it's just because I'm reading. I didn't sure. bring the PDF uh, or the printed uh, document. Um, but I will say that, like, around uh, Lantern Year 11, I'm just kind of giving a quick synopsis. He, yeah. um, large buzz of lightning, uh, uh, he demands that the, that the settlement give a sacrifice. Okay. He wants... Um, and what's happened is, is like now can he, we just give him the sack? Do I have to fight him? Nope. You you can keep every every lantern here. You can keep giving your metal goods. Great uh, for him. That's been the gameplay, guys. I appreciate you guys <laughs> stopping by. We've decided to give him all of our scrap metal forever, uh, forever, <laughs> perpetually, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. <laughs> so um, at some point, I'm guessing that we actually want to keep our weapons, uh, okay. and so you give him, you know, the two fingers. And then, you know, he's like, he's coming, he's in three lantern years afterwards. He's showing he's up. He's showing up. He's taking them. Yep. Okay, great. Fantastic. So let's, uh... uh yeah, let's swing into the lore of this and and uh, and go ahead and see how we can get decimated by, yep. by this handsome guy. So it says, and this is again, um, so in this fight, just so you know, that they'll, um, the fight for um, level one, level two, and level three are different. It's, it's actually, each, each showdown is different for each of those. Yep. Um, so I'm going to introduce the level one which is an elegant armored figure appears outside of the settlement in a flash of lightning. Its arrival is ac um, accompanied by a sudden downpour. The survivors brace themselves against the storm and struggle to behold the, mis the mystifying force. The knight slowly raises its many-faced helmet, taking a moment to cast a deep and synchronous glare as the sound of rain striking metal rises above the distant thunder. Okay. Yep. Uh... And do we start? Does he start? Yep, What's as a nemesis the, uh... fight, we always start. Okay, there are a few trait cards and personality cards that we need to go through just so I know what to expect. I'm going to go ahead and pull all these go down here. I'll read them and you can explain to me why I don't like them. Okay. Is that fair? Okay, charged. This is a trait. The crackling of electricity ebbs and flows within the Storm Knight's armor, changing the pace of the battle in unpredictable ways. V, uh, the number of tokens on charge. Yes, yeah, so this is actually similar to, if you played uh, Sunstalker, it's similar to Sun, uh, a Sunstalker card, in which does the same thing. This is just really a tracking card. Okay. And so many of the cards will actually reference this. this. What's on that yep. card? Yep, so uh, many of the cards in this one uh, will reference how many uh, charge tokens are here. Sure. Will equal to like whatever happens on those specific, specific hit location and, okay. and AI cards. Stormy Temper, trait. Acts of cowardice infuriate the Storm Knight. During the monster's turn, if a survivor spends survival to dash away from the monster, that's bad for one of my characters, uh, perform basic action targeting that survivor. If the survivor is still standing at the end of the attack, resolve the dash survival action. So he's going to hit you before you can run away. Yes. I don't like that at all. Uh, that, that defeats the whole point of running away. Uh, the monster performs the basic action after the survival is spent, but before the survivor moves. 
Yep. So you might be able to get away from a, yep, so, a more deadly attack, but you're gonna get a basic. So, so you do your search first. Yeah. But before you try, before you you could uh, dash away. Yeah, he's a, he's a quick swordsman. You're trying to hit. He hits right back. Okay. Electrical current trait at the start of the showdown. Place two tokens on charged. Okay. Uh, and then we have a flow. And then at the start of the monster's turn, the monster charges up and adds plus one monster level tokens to charged. And then we have another flow, and it says, uh, when charged is equal to six plus, flip this card, then perform basic action. On the back of this, we will discover this and we flip it. <laughs> yep. Cool. There's a lot of text there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, already, I already don't like you. The monster, all right, we have cloud walk trait. The monster is being composed of water vapor and is capable of traversing through spaces occupied by survivors. When the monster moves, it moves through as many survivors as possible. That's terrifying. Any survivor the monster passes through suffers uh, monster level brain damage instead of collision. If any survivors, any survivors the monster ends its movement on suffer con collision normally. When the monster collides with a survivor, they lose one survival and suffer knockback five. So yeah, he moves eight. So he could be mo moving potentially through many of us to get there. That's a that's a really cool mechanic. I like I like that passing through people mechanic. I I also, well, he's a he's a being of mist. I don't like it at all either. Uh, another trait, static shield. He's this is our first. At, why are there twenty traits? He's lantern year eleven. Supercharged energy radiates outward, shielding the storm knight against all damage. The storm knight has plus one toughness for each token on charged. Yes. I'm seeing how these things are combining. Yes. I don't... Okay. Let's, uh... Normally we'd place them up there just so we can see them and, like, deal with charge and everything here. Let's set them here in yep. front of you. Um, if we deal with these places, we will, uh... We will kind of clear the deck and, and reorganize. Yep. So, I mean, so. so it really is only four traits. This is really just a collection trait. Yeah, yeah it's just a tracking. But yep. we start with two on that, right? Uh, I think it's during... At the start of the turn? Place two tokens. Yeah, so grab those blue ones there. So his so his toughness is no longer uh, eleven; it's, it's thirteen. It's thirteen. <laughs> so stick that three up right there. Okay, and we're starting. We start. Yeah. Do I start? Do you? Well, start? I th I think I want to see you start first. I I mean we're starting in the edge here, so we're one, two, three, four, five, six. We're seven spaces away. Uh, most of them can Spear, can't... however, could reach. Um, um, I've got movement six and seven on a couple guys. Yeah, I, my movement's five and six over here. Six can't quite get there, but I, I have the cat gut bow. Oh, and the other thing that I want to like introduce is we have like specific characters that you develop for each one of those. So uh, I've read over mine. You've read over yep. yours. I have uh, apricot kale. Uh, she is here with a bow. Uh, she's got some harvesting tools that I don't think we're going to utilize very much. Not really. She has a phoenix helm and is basically butt naked outside of that. So I got a lot of head armor. Uh, I have Squish Topeka. Uh, Squish is running around with the screaming armor set. So I, and, and the spear, the king spear. Good combo. So I'm able to rush, push back, and stab yep. because I have the screaming armor uh, and mastery of that spear. So like... I have a lot of advantage when it comes to using that. Yep. Who, who are the people you're using? Yep, I'm using uh, Snicked. Snicked is a guitar user okay. uh, with a full leather, with a leather set. Um, quite great evasion. And yep. then uh, Lychee, who is uh, a, uh, she's got blood paint using both a mastery and fist and tooth. Okay. And a uh, leather shield and a rawhide set. And then as far as our stats go, I mean, I'm starting with five survival across the yep. board. I think yep. that's probably our, our, our hunt limit. Yep. When we arrive, one thing that I want to note, uh, we are all going to gain one strength token, and that's because of Red Fist over here on Apricot. Yeah. And we can spend that strength token as survival if, we, if we're if we forced to. Two there, because yep. the there, there's already one on the board. Yep. And you need one more yes, sir. for Apricot. Uh, and just so people are watching know, Kingdom Death is a game where you perpetually forget and miss things to some degree, especially mid-game, and because we're diving into mid-game, we're going to try to rules lawyer and like follow each yep. other's turns as much as possible, but we're trying to show this off and the experience of it. Odds are we're going to miss a smart turn or two, or I'm going to forget to utilize one of my masteries. Totally. It's, it's, it's what happens. Um, 
If you guys want to go through and correct us and leave descriptions down below for any of the fans watching that want to see the things we could have min-maxed or the ways we could have perfected this gameplay, uh, swing down there. I'm sure some people have, le have left comments about that, um, which I'm, I'm super grateful and appreciative for. It's just, I, I do want to acknowledge we probably won't we probably won't play these characters as accurately as we should. Yep, I mean, this is your first time seeing it's, the character. It's my first time with, with this unique build. Usually, you, I'd have spent, what, 15 hours yeah. crafting this armor set and yeah. knowing how to use it? Totally. So, uh, I'm just I'm just setting the groundwork for messing up. That's, Let's go for it, yeah. <laughs> uh, Apricot Kale's got a movement of six. I would have to spend my action to get up into that stone but I think that's worth it if I'm just going to be kind of firing off with the bow. Yeah, I mean, for that additional Yeah, additional you, get that, you get that additional, uh, it's accuracy and range. range. Yep. Um, so I, I'm going to start by doing that. So I'm yep. moving four up, and then I'm going to spend my action to get up on top of here. I could always surge it at a certain point if we decide that's beneficial throughout kind of the first turn. Um, but I don't need to at the moment, right? So, uh, so your move... I'm going to take, I think Lychee has a move of seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's still out of reach. You don't quite have reach. I Depending on, do we have to start spread like this? Because no, because I can move myself technically to here. Yeah, you could have been, you could have been yeah, one, one spot two, closer. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And Which that's is. the same thing with my King Spear. I'm actually going to maximize by moving over here. Yeah, so I'll move to here. Okay. The seven, and I'm going to attack. Let's take, Great. yep, so she's going to hit with Fist and Tooth. Okay. So that's two, because she's got no additional speed. Uh-huh. Uh, accuracy of six starting out, so that she only has to hit on twos. That's not bad. Yeah. That's not a bad Fist and Tooth roll. Uh, that's going to be two hits. Yep, that's two hits. Yeah. You Did you shuffle this? Yeah. Uh, I shuffled. Okay. First, we have the Stormy Feet. That's going to be a reflex card. And then we have the Stormy Breastplate. That is going to be... Oh, perfect. Uh... A magnetic card, which I'm not familiar with. Yep, and so magnetic, if the attacker uh, wounds this location with a metal weapon, which I'm not using. Now you're just using your hands. Yep. Well, in your teeth. Yep, and at the end of that weapon, at the end of that attack, the weapon gains minus one speed, minus one accuracy, and a plus one strength tokens. Interesting. Remove one token from charge. So the idea is like you're, you're, you're hitting them, you know. Yeah, you're taking some of the surge away from them. Yep, exactly. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, what, are you, what are you targeting first? Gonna... Reflex, you're going to gain minus one lo luck token after you aim at the stormy feet there. Yep. Um, I think I'm going to just have to... Actually, I'll go for magnetic first. Okay, and, and... once his base... So he's going to have a base toughness of 11, but it's modified to 13 That's at the correct. moment. Your strength on Tooth and Fist is not modified at all other than your strength. Yeah, but, and I have seven strength. Seven plus that token you have? Eight. Eight total, so you're looking for a five plus. Yep, for five plus. Okay. I mean, that'll do it. Yeah, yeah. Hey, there's not a crit. There's not a crit, but at least, so it does do damage. It does, in fact, do damage. So we are going to cycle one of these cards from the AI deck. Yep, so again, so the wound deck. Deck. as we said, it was Stormy Feet, so attacker takes, I'm going to take a minus one luck token. Okay. Uh, luck, 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 minus one luck. That sucks. Yep, and move the, the monster three spaces away from the attacker. If the monster is within three spaces, perform basic action. One, two, three. Okay. And I'm not, so... Does that cancel your that, attempt to be able to do this storm? It does cancel that attempt. Okay. So uh, I will... And that's actually bad for me as well, because you've now moved far enough away that I might not be able to reach. Which happens. Yep. That's a thing that happens. Okay, uh... I was actually going to dash and then surge again. You're going to keep pressing forward with I'm, yours? I'm going to keep pressing. I'm okay with that. Yeah. So three, so you're spending a survival for dash. I, I don't think. I don't think. Do you have works. a full rawhide? Do you get to re-roll that or no? Oh, I do. I cool. do. Go ahead and do that. You're looking for a six plus. Yep, Eight. six plus. Keep that survival. Yep. And then I'm going to. Now, does your surging, your surging and dashing? You dashed first. Yeah, dash first. Now dashing towards him. Does that connect with your modifier here? No, it does not. But it does. Uh, during the monster, if a survivor spins, so I'm able to dash yeah. away from the monster. I'm not away? Toward, yep. You're moving towards him. Yep. Okay, good to know. He's just trying to keep you from running away. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't yep. dash keyword. Yep. Okay. Yep. He's just he doesn't like cowards. You're just coming after him. Um, because of sweet battle, I get to dash. I get to surge for free. Oh, nice. Okay. As long as long as it's an attack, which it is. And you could have rerolled that anyway. So. Yep. So again, I hit on twos. There's two hit locations. 
Hit location one is going to be the Stormy Van Braces. Van Braces. Hit location two is going to be the Stormy Faceplate. Uh, you've got a reflex and a failure here. This is also a parry, so I have okay. to I have to crit to wound. Yeah, that sucks. Um, so let's go for which one? Reflex or failure first? So odds of failing are higher. Yeah, because of the parry. Uh, let's just go for. Let's just go for. I'm about to take a little damage. Maybe. Yeah. So that does hit. So if you hit the, with a club, you gain plus two strength. I don't. It wasn't. Okay. A reflex. So um, another AI. Okay. So we're clearing an AI off. Yep. And then the monster here. stares you down with intense eyes of electricity. Suffer two brain damage. Yep. Two brain damage. Yeah, okay, and you get a little bit of insanity to blanket you, right? Yep. All right. Uh, Perfect. Now you need to get a crit or failure. The monster confidently blocks the oncoming attack. Cancel all of his hits and end your attack. Add one token charged. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, that's going to be another wound. We're going to take care of this guy quick. I will... Uh, critical wound. Uh, you want to read it? Yep. The van, the van braces produce a hollow sound when struck. Attacker suffers... Uh, two... Two damage to yeah. random hit location. Uh, and remove it all from charge, though. That's big Ooh, for us. head. That's all right. You got some armor. Yep. So two from head. Okay. Now, you could dodge, right? Because you haven't spent a dodge yet. No, no, no. You can't. You're the attacker. Yep. There's no modifier for that. Oh. Yep. So two to head. Mm-hmm. But luckily, as you, were, as you were saying, I've got the armor. Um, and then removed. Cool. It'll work for me. Go. Can you Can you get there? Uh, I don't. I could surge to reach him. I could also surge here with her. I mean, if we're if we're just going to double down on this first attack, I, I don't know that it's not worth it. Uh, let's move forward. I want to see what she can do. The question is, can I get into a position? I don't think I can get into a position to move forward in a straight line, which is really where my strength is. Yeah. Um, because so I can go one, two, three, four, five, and then I could swing. I could continue swinging around. I could also cat eye circle it. The uh, the hit location deck if we wanted to double check kind of a trap card there. I'm almost sure if it's worth a move dash attack. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking through. I was trying to see if I could dash forward. I don't, um, think, I don't think you're going to get that this round. I'm not going to this round, but let's go ahead and get in his face a little bit. So one, two, three, four, five. Let's go ahead and spend a dash. I do have to go ahead and cost myself that survival, so we're dropping down to four. Uh, is... His blind spot mechanic, I won't be able to reach, I don't think, right? Technically, he's this way. Technically, so, he's that yeah, way, so, so there's, no, there's no activation for it. One, two, three, four. I'll move around the back there. Uh, and I'm going to attack with the King's Spear. Uh, I'm rolling two. I hit on a six plus. What accuracy do I have? I have no accuracy modifier, so that's not going to change. Uh, my mastery for the King's Spear allows me to be the priority target if I hit. Yep. So I can take some, some attention onto myself. Which is actually okay, because I have a significant amount of armor. Um, yep. So that first hit, I don't mind coming my way. So we're looking at a 6+, plus to connect. Uh, I gain one hit here. That is going to be a parry, so I need a crit to wound it. Yep. Uh, failure, razor winds and lightning bolts lash out. Okay. Well, luckily, it looks like you have two luck. Yeah, that's what I was looking at here. So I've got two luck with my, with my spear. Um, so... I guarantee you crit on eight, eight plus. Yep. Um, my my strength and everything, that modifier won't matter right now. Nope. Ah, it's not gonna be it. Nope. We couldn't both roll. Uh, <laughs> we couldn't both roll. <laughs> Failure. Razor winds and lightning bolts lash out as the monster deflects the survivor's attack. All survivors within three spaces of the monster suffer two damage to a random hit location. Add one token to charged. So I'll go ahead and roll for three spaces. That's both of them actually. Yeah, three. That's it. That's everyone. So I'll roll on both their boards. We're taking. I'm taking two to the chest and two to the head. I'm taking two to the chest. The head's actually perfect on uh, apricot over here because that's the only thing I have armor on. It always feels easy for a little bit, doesn't it? It always <laughs> it always feels good at first. And you then get you had a few to say hits, something. Get a few <laughs> hits in. You think you're doing okay. Oh, we're gonna defeat this easy. Absolutely. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna wipe him out almost immediately. Um, now, do you want to go ahead and go, or should I just? I could surge and either. 
I can surge in either Hunter's Whip or Catgut Blow. We don't have any moods in place, so the Hunter's Whip won't won't matter. We just have a bunch of traits. I could probably get another hit on him if I wanted to surge. Yeah, early. I think that's a good idea. Um, because so I, th I think that right now, yeah, if we can get him, the lower we can keep this. I want to chop him down a little bit. Uh, so cycling one of my survival, we're gonna go ahead and aim. Uh, I have a modified accuracy because I'm on top of this as well, right? I think, yep. believe it's an accuracy of two plus. Yep. If I aim, that drops it even lower. So seven minus four, uh, any modifier on accuracy, minus another two, seven minus six. I'm gonna connect with him. As long as you don't roll a one. As long as you don't roll a one, I'm gonna connect with him. <laughs> <laughs> well, the fate the gods have spoken. <laughs> okay, uh, you've got, I believe your character's the only one left to move before we see what he's gonna do. Yep. One, two, three, four, five. You know, I could just re-roll that. We could we could edit this video. I could just re-roll that entire... How about we not roll? I mean, but I, but I could. I, but I could you just... could. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> one, two. I'm going to use one. Dash to move up. Okay. Okay, let's make sure I have that. Yep. So we're going to go Katars. Okay. Two. Rolling a lot, right? Yep. Uh, one more speed. So three speed. There you are. Uh, accuracy of two. So I need to hit on fives. One hit. Yeah, I mean, that is a hit. Yep. And, yeah. it, no, it was a hit. That was a hit. <laughs> uh, electric Discharge. This is the first time I've seen this trap card, too. Trap. Reshuffle the hit location deck. Okay. All survivors are doomed. Yep. Perform basic action. Target the attacker. This attack profile gains. Uh, after damage, target suffers an additional knockback to and monster level brain damage as they are propelled away from the monster all survivors now within two spaces suffer monster level brain damage add four tokens to chart remember how you said that it'd be a good idea to keep charged as low as possible <laughs> yeah uh well basic action let's resolve what that's going to be first target the attacker the attack profile so basic action he's going to turn to face you He's going to be rolling a I'll speed. That once we had that back yep, in. going to be rolling a speed of two, accuracy four plus, damage two. Uh, after damage is going to be this after damage effect. So yep. it's going to modify. Yep. That. Okay, I have an evasion of four, so it's on uh, one hit. Only one. Uh, only one hit. So you, but you can't dodge because this is a trap. Yep. So, so you're one. screwed either way. Okay. Uh, two damage to a single location. Two damage to the feet, and then here's the modifier. Additional knockback two, so you already have knockback five, so you got knockback seven. Oh, it's not her though. I believe nope. you moved. Oh, yep. So you're running directly into the stone face. So you're gonna stop there, be knocked down, and take damage for hitting a inanimate object. Correct. Yep. Uh, do you know how much damage you take? Is it one or just two? one? Just one to the hand. One to the hand. Knocked, knocked over. Yep. Uh, and let's see here. You're going to suffer monster level brain damage as you're Which held did. away. You already did that. Yep. All survivors within two spaces, so everyone except my girl with the bow and arrow here, is going to also suffer monster level brain damage. So let me go ahead and do a modifier on... So just luckily, luckily monster level one. Yep. I've already added in his four. And which means that, remember that, that toughness? Now it's toughness <laughs> 15. Yeah, if you could just keep a try, an eye on that, yep. that'd be great. So static shield, for those watching, static shield gives plus one toughness for each token. And so, actually, uh, that's uh, five tokens? 16. Oh, good. Because I thought to myself, 15, <laughs> that's probably easy to hit. Well, remember, at six, which is actually about to happen. Well, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't. Nah. Do you want to cut this before I put it down, or? Yeah, I, I always cut once. You always cut at yeah, least I always once. Cut. Great, because that's that'll because that way you cycle the uh, the crit to the top. To the top, <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. I believe it's his turn. Uh 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 uh. Top of his turn. Yep. Top okay. of his turn. Right at the start of this. Uh, actually, nope. At the start of the monster's turn, monster charges up. Add one more. That's gonna be six. So that's six. So he cycles that off. Oh, disgusting. No, actually, we don't, we don't know that. Let me actually grab. Yep. Six. Oh, so he performs, first he performs a basic action. Against well, whatever. Uh, closest threat in range. That's so any of us. That would be either two of us. Want to do high or low? Uh, yeah, we can do high or low. Yeah, let's do that. So, right, I'll be five below. 
So, um, Seven. Yep, so he's mm-hmm. turning towards you. Yep. His basic's going to be two, uh, four. You got any dodge on you? I have four evasion. Four evasion, so two, eight, two. So yep. let's see if we can just not... That will work. That works very well. That two ones, work. totally. After that basic attack. Let's flip. Oh, stop. <laughs> That's what happens. <laughs> but I didn't want it to. <laughs> At the start of the monster's turn, the monster charges up and, uh, and adds that, which they did. Um, monster level tokens to charge. So he's going to continue adding one to whatever that pile yep. is. Yes. And it says when monster level is equal to, uh, to star plus six, so seven, perform grounded. And then, so we're not at grounded yet. So we have this turn to try to whittle this down. So before. we just flipped that card. Now we're we're facing down something bad. Yeah, this was actually, from a designer's point of view, so if I can talk about that real quick, um, there was a sure. lot of text on one side. So oh, okay. like, you add this, there's like four things here. So we end up making it double-sided. So like that happens, and then when you flip, you have to only have to worry about the back That side. makes sense, but I also like it as like a mechanic of a little bit of hidden information. You're not quite sure what six does. You avoid it as long as possible, which for us was a uh, turn. Yep. So that's remember we're still on the beginning of a story. We haven't drawn an AI card. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else happen over there with those traits or? Uh, we haven't. Da- nope. Because it's only the only thing. Other thing is when he walks to us or he dashes away. So I'm just gonna watch your face as I flip oh, this AI card. This does need to go to 17, right? Because he's six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna see what you how you react to this AI card. Ready? Oh, perfect. All threats in zone of. And so we're dead. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, loaded rejection or load rejection. Pick target all threats. Everyone. Yeah, everyone. Uh, no target charge. Well, he's got a target. Speed three, accuracy three plus, damage based on that. Six. Uh, remove all but one charge token. So this is like him just boom, yeah. all of his energy out. Well, luckily that's going to help us here. Uh-huh. <laughs> There's the good side. Uh-huh. Okay, let's start from uh, from left to right. Uh, you want to roll for me? I'll roll for you. Yeah. So three is going to be targeting my girl Apricot over here. What's your she evasion? has a evasion of three. So you're looking for a six plus uh, one hit. Okay, she's gonna dodge, right? Yeah. She's allowed yeah. to. Yeah, I would. I would definitely. <laughs> We're spending dodge. the heck out of dodge. Uh, moving over to, and I actually think is she the one that has a modifier on dodge? No. This one here has a modifier on dodge, then. Yep, hypersensitivity. Okay, pulling over to Squish. Uh, Squish has a evasion. Squish is down. It's not a threat. Cool. So it, like, goes above her in a way. Fantastic. Uh, Moving over to... Snit. All right. Three, what's your evasion? Uh, Five. Evasion of five. So we're looking at eights. Yep. Don't worry, I never roll eights. Of course you don't roll eights. <laughs> I, so roll, two? I roll nines and tens. <laughs> you can dodge one of those. I can. So let's go ahead and see where you're potentially getting hurt. Foot and waist. And that's six. That's a lot of damage. So I'm taking light on one of those. We'll go foot. Light on foot. You're going to dodge the waist. Yep. And so we'll take another nick off of that. Okay. And then roll again for L- Lychee. Are you sure? Yeah. Because that was a bad roll. Well, what's you can't your, do it twice in a row. What's your evasion on the top? Uh, four. I can, in fact, do it twice in a row. <laughs> Not a, quite. Uh, That's one only hit. One, only one. One hit. Uh, you could dodge it. Let's see where it is. It's going to be in the chest. I will dodge that. Go ahead and roll to see if you keep that dodge, though, because you got you got your rawhide over there. Yep. I know early game real well. Yep. I know what the heck rawhide gives you. Yep. So I actually do. Okay. So Perfect. <clears throat> uh... That's it. And then it's all but one. We remove all but one. AI discard? Yep. You do in fact stand up because you, you dropped at the in the U. I I do in fact stand up because I dropped during yep. our phase <laughs> of the uh, of the event. Yep. Um I think we need to pound pound this guy into the ground before he, he charges up again. I think you're right. Does he have any mechanics that force him to move? Because I'd love to get into the blind spot a little bit. But, like, right now we don't. We're not able to get there. I mean, I was able to do it earlier when I pushed him back. You did, yeah. Uh, what do you think makes the most sense? I mean, we could start with people that are right next to him, or we could start with the bow and see if we're able to shift him before that we, like, we chase after him. I mean, I think at, at this point, I think that... Anything. I, I'd, I'd go with more whatever you feel is more of a sure bet... I'm pretty sure I can wound him with a bow. I've got a guaranteed accuracy hit, and then oh, yeah. like the strength yep. modifier is yep. clean. Okay, um, let's start with that then. So from the top of the rock here, all I have to do is not roll a one, and I connect with him. Yep. Uh, and then from that point on, 
What's his his current defense is? Oh, it's only eleven. Plus one. We've yep. got eleven. Um, I've got plus two oh, sorry, luck. Twelve. Apologize. I've got plus two luck. I also have deadly on bows, so plus four luck. So I'm I'm really close to guaranteeing a uh, a critical here. Seven is going to connect. Let's go ahead and flip this hit location card. Uh, magnetic. If attacking, if it, if the attacker wounds this location with a metal weapon, the bow is not a metal weapon, is it? I don't think it is. No. Actually, let's see which weapons do are metal for us. Anything? Actually, maybe pretty good. Who yeah, is? I don't. King Spirit doesn't say metal nope, either. Not, I don't think we're hitting with metal weapons. Cool. Uh, at the end of the attack, the weapon gains. Okay. He's gonna have a reflex. Let's go ahead and wound him. If I got, if I get a six plus, which would be a critical wound because of deadly and luck, I would cancel his reflex. Yep. So let's go ahead and guarantee that. <laughs> this was not. Um, anyway, I don't wound him. And you do get the reflex. And I do get the reflex. So we're off to a good start. Perform basic action. Target the attacker. Then, without turning, move the monster three spaces directly away. Cancel all attacks out of. So he's gonna move in and move out. Um, remember, actually, just so you know, we have to remember this because now he's gonna move through us and then move away from you. So he's gonna cloud walk through us, right? Mm hmm. Uh, he just come to me, right? Yeah. So he's gonna cloud walk, but then stop here. Which is collision. Which is just is that knockdown outside of him. Plus one damage. So any survivor the monster passes through suffers brain damage uh, instead of collision. Okay. Any survivor the monster ends its movement Still on suffers collision. collision normally. And regular collision is, is knockback. Is knockback. Yep. So we suffer uh, when the monster collides with the survivor, they lose one survivor and suffer five knockback. So we lose one survival and brain damage. Uh, and go ahead and roll a basic attack against me. So you're looking at a speed, accuracy four plus. I've got a modifier of two, so you're looking at accuracy six plus. None, you're good cool. to go, you're golden. Cool, uh, he's then going to uh, move the monster three spaces directly away. So back towards us. So one, two, three. So he's gonna pause right there. <coughs> well, we got his blind spot. You did. That's not quite what I was looking to do, but uh, uh, it's something. Yeah. Well, we probably should. You know, I haven't been having the best luck, so if you want to go ahead and uh, and just just deal with them, I would not mind that. So I will take Snicked here. Okay. And move up and do some Katars. With the accuracy of two, so that's five plus. Okay. That's two hits. Yes, it is. Hit location. First one, we are pulling the static uh, exposure, and then we have the internal refraction. So we have a wound reaction, and we have a wound reaction. Which one do you want to target first? So... One's going to give you minus one luck token. The other's going to modify mm -hmm. the charge ability. I am just taking those minus one uh, tokens, right? Yeah. Actually, it's different characters are good. Uh, my strength three up here, plus two, plus my three for the guitars. Okay. So hitting on fours. Uh, that'll work. That'll work. So that's a successful wound. Yep. I will cycle this AI deck. And then wounding it, a piercing rainbow light shines brightly from within the monster. Overwhelm the attacker gains minus one luck. Oh, good for you. Yeah. Good for you. You're just collecting those. Yep. Yeah. And then this one, uh, Static Refresher. So again, I, I hit on fours. I missed. You do not wound, which means no reaction happens. Which is probably not bad That's, because yeah. it looks like I would have actually pulled some uh, some lightning rod terrains out. Which are going to help buff his charge. I it's assume. both buff a charge and actually debuffs his charge. You can use it to actually use an action to take away his charge. Okay, interesting. All right. Am I able... I would really like to, to hit this guy. So so I could go ahead and back up and uh -huh. then surge to, uh, or dash, to use my Screaming Ar Armor ability paired with that spear. Good. I'm gonna do that. Uh, and that'll actually knock him right next to you. So I'm gonna move one, two. That's my move. Then I'll need to dash. So I'm gonna go ahead and spend a dash dropping to two there. One, two, three. Oh, I need to go one back. One, two, three, four. Yep. 
Uh, because of my screaming armor, I'm doing slam, full move in a straight line. If you move four spaces, stop adjacent to the monster, suffers knockback one, minus one toughness until the end of the round. Yep. So that's dropping... To, to 11. To 11. Yep. Uh, and then I'm also able to use skewer. After I slam, spend my uh, attack, my action, to move one space and activate a melee weapon with a two plus strength. If you wound with a spear, apply that wound roll result to the next selected hit location of the attack. Yep. So it might guarantee a wound. So I can actually press forward, go ahead and use my, uh, my spear, which is rolling a two, six plus, pair that with my accuracy, which is zero. So six plus is what I'm looking for. Uh, I got a 10 and I got a six. So that's two hits. Yep. That 10, I can go ahead and apply uh, to the next selected hit location of the attack. Yeah. So there's a chance. If there's a crit here, there's not. <clears throat> there's no reflex though, right? That's Because a crit will, actually no, a crit doesn't kill the reflex. No. It would kill a reaction. You still get a wound off of it, but you would still get the <sighs> reflex off of it. I hate that. I hate that. Because I, I felt like I had a good thing going there. Like I, had a, I was doing something for once in this game, I was doing something nice and uh, attacker gains minus one luck token. Uh, move the monster three spaces away from the attacker. If the monsters are within three spaces, perform basic action, target the attacker. One, two, three, all right. Um, and then if the monster is within three spaces, so is he still within three spaces? Yeah. So he moves three spaces away. Yeah, I think that's what, what this is for. Is this is actually saving you if, if you're fighting with, um, like, if you had done this, that with a bow, or with a arrow. bow, or if you had stayed your spear and were one away, if you had start your spear because your spear is two range two, reach two, right? Yeah, I didn't have to move forward with my spear. I did. I didn't have to. So if you had done that, uh -huh. you would have been four away, and it wouldn't. So knowing that, could I just not be next to him? Or how about knowing that next time? Ugh, I hate you. I hate people that like playing the game how it's supposed to be played. It's such a cruel game already. <laughs> Basic attack, fine. Roll the dice. Speed two, accuracy, wait, wait, wait. Evasion zero, four plus. Oh, screw one you. Uh, one hit, I don't get to dodge because I am the attacker. I'm taking two damage to a single location. Two to the chest to the body. I'm getting a lot of damage on the but body. But that is the point of, of that. He comes back in, and if, are you close enough? I hear what you're and, saying. And you were. I, <laughs> I do hear what you're saying. Now, I should have actually drawn, I did two wound hits. Yeah. So there was a second one yeah. drawn that we didn't resolve. It's just gonna enter the discard pile here. Um, and on to you. And I would make sure that actually is a failure. You didn't fail. Uh, I didn't. I didn't roll. Oh, remember because that first one results yeah. in him leaving. And actually, I could probably still resolve that one, couldn't I? Yeah. Because he left and then came back into range, which means that second wound is still available to me. Because the only thing that yeah. cancels a wound is if he's yeah, completely he, yep, out of yep, range. Yep. So he's still there. I can still try to strike. Um, well, do I have? I got. I got minus one luck, which means I got only one luck. Yeah. <sighs> Put that on the right side for you. Thanks, buddy. You're welcome. Thanks. <laughs> Nines or tens. It's, you know, uh, five, three, toughness, way too high. Did you? you did... Uh, I did, I did, yeah. Um, anyway, the electric discharge strikes the attacker in the face and they suffer monster, or they suffer it's V not bad. damage. It's not bad. To the head. So I will take one damage to the head. I mean, could, that could have been way worse. When that was six, mm -hmm. that would have hurt. I'm just going to let all the fans know that we're trying to sell your product here. So like, <laughs> if we could if we could do something to him. We have clearly have done damage. I've done nothing. <laughs> You've done, you, you successfully wounded him at the start of the round. You're done. I, I'm not going to argue with you. You've done five out of I, 11. I mean, all right. I think it's your turn. <laughs> I've been so ineffective. Okay. Um, this round, who hasn't gone? Uh, I both of my characters have gone. And she's gone. And she's gone. So it's really just the fist. And I don't believe either of your characters have gone. 
My character hit with okay. the O, yep. backed him yep. up, which knocked us back. I then went back and dashed forward to use my screaming armor. Uh, I don't believe either of you have utilized your turn. Yep, then I'm going to move Katar into blind spot. Okay. Uh, actually, that's not blind spot, is it? Because that's actually No, front. he's facing. Then I'm actually going to move my fist and tooth into the blind spot. Okay. So Lychee is going to hit with fist and tooth. Uh, two eight zero, so no extra speed. Yep. It's on. What math are you doing there? It's I've got six accuracy, so it just has to hit twos. Okay. So two hits. That'll work. Hit location one. Uh, so the stormy shoulder. He has a reflex there. It's also super dense, which makes it uh, hard to hit. And then we have uh, stormy van braces. This is a parry location, so yep. you need a crit. So this one I think we're fine because I'm not hitting with any bone weapons or fragile sure, weapons. It would break if yep. you're hitting with a bone weapon. So he's got a strength of seven. Uh, so I hit on, and these keep getting mixed. We'll just say, so it has to hit, oh, now plus one more. Oh, is that damn toughness? So it has to hit on fives. I don't work. Uh, reflex hit you though, or you did the fail? Yep, that first? actually, does, I'm putting on the reflex. So that actually goes through and then actually knocks me back. Uh, into the wall. Into the wall. So you're gonna knock, be knocked down and you're gonna take one damage to a single location. The head. To be fair, that's probably better than the alternative, which is failing on that parry location. Yep. So, so okay. Did you do the one AI? I did, I did cycle that. Um, you got one more character. Uh, that, is that knock down and knock? It is. is knock down? Uh, if you encourage, I could surge. Yeah, I don't mind encouraging. Um, well, which one is that? Is that your person with the rawhead armor? Yep. It is, isn't it? All right, so I've got two and two over here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and encourage with Apricot Kale. I want to keep Squish so she can dodge if she needs to. Okay. So go ahead and stand back up there. Yep, and then I'm going to surge. Okay. So again, blind spot again. Yep, blind spot again. So I actually missed the accuracy before. So I'm pretty much as long as I don't roll ones, I'm good. Okay. One, of course, one, <laughs> one, of course. <laughs> when you say it. When you say it, if you bring it into existence. We have a first strike location. So if there was any more, yep. you'd have to target your exactly. first. Uh, this is a wound. It'll modify charged if you hit him. So let's go ahead and resolve that. Yep. Uh, again, I hit on fives. Okay. Uh, actually, with this plus one, it's. Yeah, five. You're aiming at the stormy knee. Yep, six. Six. Which I did wound. You did. Uh, which means, let's see here. Jets of steam pour from the faces on the monster's armor. All adjacent survivors suffer knockback two. Oh, perfect for me. Add one token <laughs> to charge. So add a token to charge there. You're going to run into the wall behind you and take a single damage to the head. Oh, that's heavy. It's uh, a knockdown. Great. <laughs> Perfect. She, so she gets pounding if the wall gets up, gets it. <laughs> You'd think she'd move out of that area. <laughs> the blind spot is so tempting. It's a good spot to be in. Although you, your, your modifiers make it so you're hitting him perfectly no matter what. I don't, you're right. I should have got to the side. You're right. I'm uh, just yes. saying. You're right. Uh, let me add one more to the charge. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Uh, I think, do, does everyone move too? Uh, no. Uh, adjacent. Oh, all adjacent. Yeah, you're it's right. Fine. I was not adjacent. She's not adjacent. I mean, it's, so fine. it's not fine. It's me that's moving back. It's not fine. But I like that you're trying to comfort me. <laughs> it's Thank <fine>. you. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> okay, then Snix gets to go. Yes. So one move in. Mm hmm. Actually, I'm going to do two, three, get go to the side. the side. You just check that, that corpse there if you want. Ah, the corpse is not not trying to kill me at this moment. That's true. He's definitely trying to kill me. I've heard, I, yeah, I might just go hunt a campus plants. There's two of them on the board here. I don't know, man. They seem safer. Would you be Would you be mad at me if I just went picking flowers for a bit? They feel way safer. I could find like some bugs there. I could get some vermin to eat. Directly eat it and see if you just can speed yourself up. Hundred percent. All right, what are you doing? Okay, so um, speed of one. So rolling three. Yep. Uh, Accuracy's two, so with, with the Katars, that's rolling five, three hits. That'll do it. Uh, that's not a trap. That is the stormy faceplate. Yep. We also have the stormy back. Yep. And lastly, we have the winding lightning. I feel like trap's coming in there somewhere. It's uh, within the next ten. So we'll go, man, all these are wounds. So like, uh, you got a reflex up there at the top, which isn't much better than a wound. 
Okay. What are you wounding on? What's your modifier? Her brain's pretty good, so I think I'm actually going to do that. And it's pretty low. So, uh, three, it's a uh, three damage for that, plus three strength, so six, and so I need to roll six. Toughness 12, you're looking for sixes to do a wound. We'll, we'll you got start. any luck to modify yourself here? You actually have minus luck. I have minus luck, no luck, so. So yeah, ten is yeah. all you're hunting for. So, Four, miss. Four, that's going to be miss. A monster stares down intensely. I suffer two brain damage. Okay. So that's fine. You're fine on, you're dropping down to two there. Yep. Okay, this so will go the same thing. Need six as a wound. There, that a six. will be a wound. Uh, if the attacker has three understanding, which I think I've got three understanding. Okay. Uh, a profound revelation grants insight into the monster's fantastic speed. Hmm. The attacker is on the verge of learning something profound and may spend five survival, which I do not have, to gain um, one speed. Just a permanent speed? It's a permanent speed. That's cool. Speed is one of those traits that I don't always want in this game. Yeah, but for her, but for him, that with may not the be guitars bad. like that, like you're tearing into something pretty quick. But for the right character, you may want yeah, that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I might give it to her over someone like my bow maiden or something yep. like that. Yeah, interesting. <clears throat> and then, oh, actually, we we did wrong. We missed the first strike. That should have came first. But it's okay. Good to remember that. You are right. Yep. So next time we're going to remember that. But I did say at the beginning that we we're going to get at least 12 things wrong. So that's at least seven. There, that, well, no matter what, that is a wound on that. Okay. The attacker suffers uh, one damage to one hit location and add charge. Add a charge. Which brings. One, so the only thing that could have been ordered differently is if this damage causes you to be knocked down, you might have done one less wound. So let's see. You don't roll that. You roll this for damage. Oh, right, right, right. One damage, one hit location, one to the waist. Wait, I'm fine. Five, you're perfectly fine. You would have been able to continue. Uh, you so know, it doesn't change anything. Doesn't, doesn't change anything. Okay, we know someone's art was like in the middle of writing that comment, being like, "Oh, it was the first," and we uh, we caught it. corrected it. Yep. So that now now uh, that's that's beginning of his turn. I, I mean, unless any of us want to just double down, <laughs> we're two hits from going. You've already surged with one of your characters. Uh, uh, I probably should surge again. You could you surge with her. I could surge with my bow maiden. Yeah, do you want to go with that first? Yeah, let me try. Let me see if I can get a hit off with my bow yeah. maiden. We could end this fight before any real damage happens, which would be a bad showing for you and your AI deck. But uh, no, I think it feels right. I mean, really. it's been challenged. Not really. I'm, I'm honestly scared of letting him go again. <laughs> then I think we should do it. <laughs> uh, all right, because we know what the next card's going to be. <laughs> I just I just noticed that too. Uh, I'll just I'll just reshuffle this this hit location this AI deck. Okay, um, I'm down to zero survival. We have spent every penny of survival we have within the first two rounds, which means we're running out of time quickly. Uh, I'm rolling here. I'm gonna aim. I hit on a one plus four. I do connect. Hit location here. Uh, Stormy sabatons. This is magnetic and it has a reflex. So let's go ahead and see if we can wound. Uh, three plus four plus five. So I'm looking at eight on the modifier, going up against 13. So five. Not bad, I think you got this. I, I, have, uh, I have four luck though. So five to wound, six plus to crit, which would cancel that reflex. Yep. That's gonna be a wound. That's a wound. That'll at least get rid of that disgusting card. Which means that Snicked Re actually, oh yep, your reflex. Reflex is gonna happen. Without turning, move the monster three spaces directly away from the attacker, cancel all hits now out of range, uh, remove one token from charged. So she actually, on top of, so collision. Yep. One, so you actually go five. Five. And take brain damage one. I can handle that. Okay. Nope. And uh, now can you chase him down and finish this? Or, or hear me out, hear me out. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't, because I can't, I can't double dash. You can't. Hear me out. Oh, I, I didn't get behind it, that's right. You could dash, and you could pick whatever's up on that monster corpse. I could, or we could finish uh -huh. this round. That's true. Before he... No, I hear you. I hear you. But there is a rotting monster corpse right next to where he started. Okay, let's, let's, let's pick it up. So I oh, will... Are you really going to go pick that up? Yeah. You're a horrible person. <laughs> now we need the terrain card for this. Uh, all right. I'll find it. Okay. So uh, you're... I was 
I was entertaining the fans. Go ahead. Go ahead, roll okay. on that dead monster. Well, I figured you wanted to see more of if the If that's the case, I'm gonna start picking a canthus. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here? Okay, so if a dead monster is drawn during showdown uh, setup, the survivors may start the showdown. Mm -hmm. Oh. Uh, anywhere on the board, which we could have done, actually. We could have moved ourselves around. Oh, okay, well. Well, six would have gained a basic resource. Archive this terrain. Cool, cool, that was worth it. Now his turn. It happens. <laughs> We're doing a basic action. Yep. Yeah. At least he doesn't... Oh, actually, it's the beginning of his turn, right? Ah, uh, yeah. So he gains... It's just one. It's just one. We're at up to four? Yep. So four would actually give him... So he's up 15. We've, we didn't move one up last time. Mm -hmm. on us. But yeah, 15. Okay, that's all right. We can deal with that. Basic action. Closest threat in range... Closest threat in range might be directly in front of him there, I believe. Or it could be the girl. Oh, actually, because it's... It's not in field of view. He was down last time, so... Yeah. It's not in field of view. It's, it's not... in range. One, two, three. Yep. One, two, three. I think this would be it. Yeah, it's facing. Uh, so we're moving all the way forward. Speed two, accuracy four plus. He's attacking my girl Squish here. Squish has got an evasion of zero, mind you. Ooh. Zero. Uh, four plus damage to after damage bash and knockback. Just don't hit me. So two needs to be less than four. four. Yeah. No, it didn't hit you. No, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I approve. Uh, Our turn. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're not wrong. And all we need is a single hit. I am going to let Squish try to do the honors. So let's see. I'm not going to be able to move. Uh, I do have minus one luck. I'm just gonna go ahead and attack with that spear. King spear two, hitting on a six plus modifier for that based on accuracy. I have no modifier. Yep, so six plus. I uh, I am going to spend one of my survival to surge. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a um, wise move. Again, I, <clears throat> or I could just edit this out, cut to this point right here. Two, hitting on a six plus. <laughs> Squish, all she has to do is connect. Two hits. Two hits. <laughs> mm -hmm. One. That cut might have come in clutch. Oh, oh. I am a great at cutting cards. Because <laughs> that means it was on, on the, the top. top. Mm -hmm. uh, Stormy Cloak and Stormy Palm. One is impervious, not great for us. Well, and one is a parry. So you have to double crit this to do anything. Do you have any luck? Do you have minus luck? Did you have plus one luck? I had plus two. I had plus two. I got minus one. I'm looking at nines. Uh, let's roll them both at the same time. Brown going in for impervious. Yeah. Black going in for that parry location. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> Brown on the stormy cloak impervious. Uh, critical wound, destroy the cloak. The destroyed cloak disappears until there's nothing left. Persistent injury, lost mantle, affects some AI cards. It doesn't matter because we kill him. That's right. Yes. We kill him by like ripping off his cloak. I feel, I feel satisfied. <laughs> that was cool. That was cool. So. For, for any of you that have cut to uh, the, the final thoughts section of this gameplay video of the showdown with the Stormy Knight, uh, that felt like a Kingdom Death encounter. Yeah. Um, kind of a couple of things. Uh, it was always meant to be an ebb and flow. I think you could feel that. When, his, when the tokens are low, yeah. he's kind of weak. Well, and we I followed your lead, and we hit him hard every turn. I mean, everyone was spending survival to get this guy. Well, you have to keep those tokens low, which yeah. I think he does. But I think that, as you could tell, when his tokens got high, when we had, like, the six tokens, we were, like, scared of getting that seventh token, right? Like, we all dodged. If we'd taken another cycle of that, none of us would have had survival left to dodge. Each one of us would have taken a critical wound on the chart. Like, someone would have died then. Like, electricity just yeah. pops their brain. Yeah, I mean, I think we, we looked at with the right crits at the right time. Yeah. And I think that, like, and this is, like, it is a little bit of a bell curve. Like, it's, it's star charge token. So, like, when you get to the the twos and threes, you're, you're taking more star. Yeah. So you're you're flipping, ele you're flipping electron current all the time. Yeah. You're coming in, he's knocking you back. Coming in, he's knocking you yeah. back. Well, and the, the interesting thing is, one thing that you were pointing out to me, this is a three-stage 
Nemesis encounter. Yep. So not only is this first stage developed, but you have the AI, the support deck for levels two and three the next time he comes back. Yep. So we have moderately buffed characters here. Characters that should be able to handle him at Lantern Year 11. Like you had to play yeah. a good game yeah. to get these characters at Lantern Year 11. Like it's not impossible, No, no. but no. It, it's been going well for you. Yeah. When he comes back, he's going to be worse. When he comes back the third time, he's going to be even harder. He has other modifiers, yeah. other other kind of things that you have to deal well, with. Well, there's some things about that. Yeah. I don't want to give too much story away. Sure. I, I think a lot of this, I think that one thing we talk about Kingdom Hearts, so much is around lore. Well, so I was I, telling you, I was excited to play this show. Uh, first time I've dealt with him, you know, first time I've dealt yep. with your fan. And I was excited because one of the best parts of Kingdom Death for me is always that first time you face something. I'm nostalgic for the white yep. lion because the first time I show, I, I yep. like, oh, you know, shut up. When you get the fuzzy growing that first time, yeah. when you pull or, the test of the dust, like the phoenix. Yeah. The, I don't fight the phoenix often. It's not very rewarding. But like the first time I fought the phoenix, the way those mechanics work, just that time, like it felt like things were shifting, felt really good. This felt unique into itself. I like that ebb and flow. I like that power, kind of that pull back and forth. So that's neat. Yeah, and, and then. Um, each again, F, each of the rewards at the end are different too. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna give it away because I, I want everyone to play and see. Uh, once we turn the camera off, I'll read it out for you because I think okay. I want you to hear. It. Okay, cool. Um, but I think that like that's that's the because you're thing. actually feeding into the lore of this guy. He is according to Kingdom Death, he is a samurai trainer. He he lives on a castle kind of up in the sky, a floating sword up in the sky. He's known for kicking people off of it. Yep. And like the people down at the bottom collecting resources from yep. the, the people Storm that he sacrificed. Yep. And so there is lore and narrative that your game, you know, your nemesis or your showdown encounter is is dealing with. Right? Yep, and I assume your story elements yep. tie into that to some yep. degree. Yep, yeah, and they, and they escalate as they go too, as well as the rewards escalate to that as well. Very cool, very cool. What were what were some of the most complicated parts of designing or kind of pulling this this off? I mean, this is how 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 many months or years did it take to get this to a table? Uh, and what were some of the biggest challenges? Yeah, I mean, it got it got to the table probably about Gen Con the first time I felt. Um, like halfway decent about about mm -hmm. the character, um, and then I well, first want to apologize for who actually probably printed it at that time because I think it was one of the, it was one of those things and probably Pooch was the same way when he did 1.0 1. Oh, sure. 1. 1.3 and then he came back and I think we're gonna see some of that with campaigns of death too. In which we like buffed, I, we buffed the antelope a little bit, we shifted <laughs> some of the values on things. Yep. You always have. Yep, I, I put it down for a few months and in that time frame, I think I mentioned in the um, other episode, mm -hmm. we got a few new people that were really able to look at it and like uh, the, actually the character who actually built these out, her name is, uh, is Ripter. Nice. Um, and she like. She really was able to like really min max him, mm -hmm. and we we learned some of his really faults. Mm. Um, so things like some of the magnetic came out of there. It was it was it was another trait I ended up kind of tying in. Uh, we learned a lot, as I mentioned, from elect electric current because this was all on one side. It was just too confusing. It was too much. Yeah. Um, we, we actually this and actually it was this on one card and charged together. It was mm. just it was just a lot. Yeah, really. Cool. And then um, we ended up like realizing. Uh, this charge mechanic, like, why aren't we using the same kind of iconography that we that uh, Sunstalker uses? For sure. And then we started using that elsewhere. And then For I sure. and then I just tied that more in. And then as we played that, it feels, you started feeling like the this feels right. And then I, as you had it, you thought you had that perfect balance of you know of. You know that right feel for you know depending on lantern year, sometimes losing, sometimes winning, but that mm. felt that right right ratio, and it felt like the right kind of fight. Man, I and I really appreciate the fact that you have already pre built character sheets here. Um, I was super excited when the Giga Lion came out because of those those starting gear grids. I have tried to demo those with intro characters, and I I got to be honest, I didn't think they were the best way to introduce someone to Kingdom Death. No. Um, because I tried that. I, that was a, that was a thought. It was an experiment. <laughs> I tried that. That was a thought. It was an experiment at the top. Like maybe these are a better way to show someone what you could experience from the, the whole of the game. So for you and your your like fan created community, because I, I also don't think the prologue is the best way to introduce new people to Kingdom Death. I, I don't think you quite get everything that's there, but I think the gig line's too far ahead. So for you and your community, maybe three years down the road or two years yeah. down the road, I would love to have a way to print out and table four starting characters about mid-game for a rewarding experience, like a showdown that, that matters. Uh, that doesn't mean they had to play 10 hours to get there. Yeah, I, right? think, I think the one thing... Um is that 
these characters, unlike the like the Giga Lion, mm. have all of like the armor sets, which is like well, good and bad. That's weird and cool too, because you've not only tied in this; these are easier to follow than the Giga Lion. I think so. I think at the same time, it's a lot more than the Giga Lion. So I think if you're a first time character, you I couldn't th- use these. I think that these are probably a little much. <laughs> you could probably build something that's like this, maybe with less. Well, that's that's what I'm saying. Is like as you guys start creating and crafting these intro characters for playtesters and, and prototyping and stuff like that. Um, a set of four where you're just like, hey, this is five years in, starting gear, starting traits. Yep. Good way to show it off. Yep. Like, here's the here's the guy. You like, give me four and tell me if I'm running the showdown. Like, I'm the experienced KDM player. Yep. Play with this person and give everyone else people that supplement or get get to do the fun one. So maybe give me the cat eye circlet and and like the the like control the board modifiers. Yep. And then let other people have a bow, a sword, a little bit of yep. berserk, tra- you know, attached to them. Yeah, I'd be really surprised um, if we don't see more vignettes coming with with some of the future content. We've got to. I mean, it's such a it's such a good mechanic to pull into the main game. Um, you know, the same thing with a lot of the stuff he's been playing with. Like he's turning Kingdom Death into a legacy style game. Yeah, um, which is hard because it's such a big game already. I, I don't have time to add in other pieces, but. I mean, it's it's complicated. Um, it's it's like a it's like an interesting ask, but this was this was cool. This felt like a fresh encounter. Good, I'm glad which you Which is the it. biggest compliment I can give you. Genuinely. Yep. And uh, as you can tell, nothing ever felt broken. No. And everything, you know, I think that that was a big thing. We spent a lot of time to make sure that like all those things were tied up. It it felt like there was the right amount of tension. I could see the pathways to our demise. Like that's important. Yep. Uh, we did well. We got our hits in when we needed to. We spent all of our survival making sure we took him down. That seems appropriate. If if another round had gone and we hadn't secured that last wound, we would have started taking some massive damage. Um, yeah, because I think we were at four, so he would have he would have four damage to three of our characters while pushing us out. Yep, backing us off. We no longer have the ability to surge or to dash to get up next to him to wound yep. him. Um, you know, and we weren't every hit wasn't successfully wounding him. Like, it was a give and take. Like, we were about 50% on. So, uh, yeah. I, you you and the community should be really proud of this. Thank you. This is cool. This is for them. And I think that, like, again, uh, as you mentioned earlier, uh, we're patreon.com backslash CCG team. Yeah. And I think the big thing is all of this or it's online. It's all public. It's all public. Right. We, we actually have uh, NPC links. It's uh, make playing cards. Yeah. So you can actually, everyone can go out there and print their own cards it's, for this. It's as easy as like following the link and paying the cost. It's literally, you that's all You guys don't make any money off the back end nope. of paying the cost. Like, nope. this is, I mean, this is genuinely a labor of love. Um, I do have to say, like, if you guys have watched and, and got to this point of the video, if you're fascinated by the Storm Knight and what you and, and kind of the CCG community are doing yep. over there, um, I'm not involved with them. I'm, I'm a friend. I, I met you at Gen Con. We're just, we nerd out on Kingdom Death. Uh, head over there, become a part of the community. Even if you're a $1 backer for a group of like you guys, um, it matters. It's the same thing for, for my channel. Like we're new, we're young. We don't have a lot of people behind us. Um, every single person that just shows support uh, matters. So if you have the dollar to spare, if you have tw- you know the $12 across the course of a year, to say thank you, to say that we support what you're doing and we're excited to like check out this type of content, um, hit that link and swing over there. Yeah, and I do want to say just real quick, Jesse, is that no, all, all, all no, you can't say it. All that money that is that that is backed is all going back into this. So like I'm not keeping it, the team's no, not yeah, keeping no one's, it. No one's making anything. You guys, yeah. you guys are really purposeful about keeping everything free and public. Yep. And the money that that they're asking for is offsetting the personal funds they have to invest to hire graphic designers, artists, sculptors to, to create new and unique models and, and characters yep. and, and cards. So like you you can't out of pocket the hundreds of dollars it takes to hire a, a professional sculptor to make a brand new character and model for a thing that you're building. Yep. Um, that's what you want the money for. Exactly. That's it. So those files become yours. They become the public. You're able to print them. You're able to order them. Uh, yep. It's neat. I, re- I really, I think this is super cool what you guys are doing. Thanks. Um, I think it's, not only do I think it's super cool, I think it's good for the community. Like, And that's that's yep. different, right? It's, yep. It's different to have something that's neat versus something that I think, I think this is 
Um, it keeps people attached. It gives an outlet for people who want to get into design, get into creativity. I think the community that you've talked about harboring kind of in your design yep. school is what I'm going to say. Instead of being cutthroat on every choice and decision you make, this gives someone an opportunity to like stretch their wings. You expect them to put in what they expect yep, to get out. Exactly. So like if they show up, if you're interested in connecting with these guys, their door is wide open. All they're going to expect out of you is a willingness to learn and a willingness to put in effort and time. Yep, um, that's what that Same is. thing they're doing, right? And so if you're interested in Kingdom Death, interested in spreading your wings, figuring out how to build something like this that feels finished when it hits the table, like, I, I don't know of a better school to learn from. Um, so, I mean, just all all the props in the world. Thanks, um, man. I'm super impressed with this. Thanks. So, and I haven't seen this before. So <laughs> I've talked so, about it with you, but I'm glad this No, you, you, you told me, like, excitedly, and I think the first time you told me about it, I, like, I was like, oh, cool. Like, fan-created stuff. Cool, right? Yeah. Like, neat. But how good could it be? Yeah. Right? Yeah, exactly. Like, that's always the first response you get. That is the first response we get. <laughs> uh, and it's good. And uh, and it's really good. And, like, the other modifiers you have just for usability, just for... for if, if someone has the cash to spend to get those story events, to get these disorder trait cards down here on the bottom, yep. um, increase the usability of the game to a point beyond where Poots could reasonably do. So, like, we talked about this. I, it's not, I'm not blaming Poots or Kingdom Death for not shipping trait cards or disorder cards that you can put on your character profile. The cost becomes a point where, like, the fan base that he has wouldn't exist because they couldn't afford to buy in. But for the 10% or the 2% the that can afford to go ahead and go online and order these upgrades, the fact that they're available is is immensely valid. Well, I think also from a storage point of view, yeah. I think we've all moved to things like gear, like you know, we have. Gear, you know, the like community a, as a whole is like binders, but like to upgrade. But if you put all of these into a box, I mean, that yeah. box is just going to be countless cards. Well, and that's 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 the thing. Like, it just wouldn't fit. It wouldn't store. It wouldn't ship. Like, it'd be unreasonable for him to provide. Um, yep. Beyond what's what we're already asking. Totally. Of him. But, but for you guys to take the time to do it, it's the same type of solutions that the, you know, the cardboard wizard is providing with these token inserts. Yep. Um, same type of solutions that my custom wooden box, you know, that's, that's something not everyone gets. But it was special to me, right? It yep. mattered. And so it's a, it's a labor of love. Yeah. Well, hey, I appreciate you being here. Thanks, uh, guys, thank you for watching to this point. Um, you know, that was, a, that was such a cool showdown. Um, I'm excited to kind of keep checking things out. Here's the last thing. If you've made it to this point in the video, uh, it means that you at least to some degree were interested in and enjoyed the content that we produced. So I have, I have two asks. First, make sure you're subscribed. I assume you already are, but just double check. You know, YouTube's a little funny. Uh, second, if you want to see more of this content, um, we are already in discussion about how to like get you up here a little bit more often, show off more of the stuff you and the community are Both making. Both the core game and more of this. Well, yeah, the core game and the fan-created content, so, like trying to figure out how to mix and, and provide content around both of it. Um, the hardest part for me is having someone that knows the game on hand. So like, if I'm able to talk you into visiting, uh, then it's easier for me to produce Kingdom Death content. That's just the reality of it. So for the, the few of you that are still watching, uh, I'd love for you to comment down below letting us know what you're interested in, whether it's fan-created content specifically, um, how to plays, tutorials, kind of that periphery stuff, or if it's a core storyline or core gameplay. Along with that, the 30 of you that are remaining out of the hopefully thousands that have watched, share this with a friend. Send You know someone in your Kingdom Death group or in your board game group that would enjoy our channel. We produce some of the highest quality content in the board game space, and we're really proud of that. We put a lot of time into it. Um, if you're here at this point, get a friend, get a single friend to subscribe. If you do that, it will make all the difference in the world. So, And it'll convince you to come visit me again. <laughs> this is true. Uh, so, thank you for joining. Whatever you do, though, despite if you do any of that, I mean, ultimately you don't have to. I'm just a dude behind the computer. Uh, remember to do the important thing. Get out and play some games. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.